In the heart of the Congo Basin, where the dense jungle surrenders to the relentless flow of the river, lies a village untouched by time. Here, the air vibrates with the life force of ancient trees, and the river, a serpentine deity, carves its path through the earth with silent authority. It is in this place of untamed beauty and lurking mysteries that Nia's story begins. Nia, with eyes as vibrant as the verdant canopy above, and a spirit as untamed as the river's current, has always been drawn to the whispers of the river. These were not the idle tales spun by the elders as they sat under the moon's watchful eye, but whispers of a world beyond, of wishes granted and fates altered. To Nia, the river was not just water cutting through land, it was a portal to the unknown, a keeper of secrets waiting to be unraveled. Each day, as the sun claimed its dominion over the sky, bathing the village in a golden hue, Nia would find herself on the riverbank. The soles of her feet, toughened by the earth's embrace, would tread softly on the moist soil, her heart sinking with the rhythmic pulse of the Congo. Lincoln, her dearest friend since they were no more than toddlers chasing the shadows of clouds, often watched her from a distance, his brows furrowed in a mix of admiration and concern. Lakin, don't you ever wonder what lies beyond? Nia asked one day, her gaze fixed on the horizon where the river bent into the unknown. The elders speak of a demon, a spirit of the river that can grant any wish for a price. Lekan, practical and grounded unlike the dreamy Nia, scoffed gently. Those are just stories, Nia, meant to keep us from wandering too far. The river gives us life, but it can also take it away. Why tempt fate? But Nia was undeterred. Her curiosity, a flame kindled by the stories and fueled by the mystery of the unknown, refused to be extinguished by caution. But what if it's true? What if we could ask for something, something that could change everything? The air around them seemed to still, as if the jungle itself was leaning in, eager to hear the secrets of a young girl's heart. It was then, in the waning light of day, that Nia made a decision that would alter the course of her life. I'm going to find the river demon, she declared, a determined glint in her eye. I'm going to make a wish. Lekan's protest died on his lips, the gravity of Nia's resolve rendering him speechless. As the crimson hues of dusk painted the sky, the riverbank, a place of play and laughter, transformed into the stage of Nia's impending journey, a journey into the heart of the Congo's deepest mysteries. That night, as Nia lay in her bed, the sounds of the jungle a familiar lullaby, her thoughts raced with possibilities. The river's whispers, once a distant murmur, now rang clear in her mind. They spoke of power of dreams realized, but beneath the allure there was a shadow, a hint of something sinister. Unbeknownst to Nia, her desire for change, for a life beyond the confines of her village, had set her on a path towards an encounter that would test the very fabric of her being. The Congo River, with its serene beauty and dark depths, awaited Nia's call, ready to reveal its ancient secrets and the price of desiring more than what fate had allotted. As dawn broke, casting its first light on a day that would be remembered for generations, Nia stepped out of her home, her resolve as strong as the river's current. The adventure that beckoned promised not only the fulfillment of her deepest desires, but also a confrontation with a truth as old as the river itself. The story of Nia and the river demon had begun, a tale of wishes, curses, and the unbreakable bonds of friendship. Under the cloak of night, the Congo River whispered secrets of old, its waters shimmering under the moon's pale gaze. Nia, heart pounding with a mix of fear and anticipation, stood at the river's edge, the place where water meets land, where reality blends with the whispers of the ancients. As she called out to the river demon, the air grew thick, the once gentle murmur of the river turning into a roar. From the depths, a figure emerged, neither fully human nor spirit, its form shifting like the water itself, eyes glowing with an eerie, unnatural light. I've heard your call, child of the land, it spoke, its voice the flow of the river, both beautiful and terrifying. Speak your wish, and it shall be yours. But remember, all gifts come with their price. Nia, her resolve faltering in the presence of this ancient being, whispered her desire, a wish for a better life, for her and her village, free from the hardships that had plagued them for generations. The demon smiled, a gesture that sent shivers down Nia's spine. A noble wish indeed, 
But the price, dear Nia, is the soul of your dearest friend, Likan's spirit in exchange for your heart's deepest desires. The air stilled, the weight of the demon's demand pressing down on Nia. It was then Lekan stepped from the shadows, having followed Nia, his presence a silent testament to their bond. Nia, no! Remember who we are and the tales of those who bargained with spirits. We cannot control what we do not understand. A battle waged within Nia, the demon's promise tempting, yet her heart screamed in protest. With a strength born of their shared past and the unbreakable bond of friendship, Nia refused the demon's pact. I cannot pay that price. My friend's soul is not mine to give. The demon's eyes flared with anger, and the river around them swirled in a frenzy. Then you shall bear the curse of your refusal. You sought to change your fate, and so you shall. Bound to the river, a spirit of lamentation, warning others of the cost of their desires. As the curse took hold, the first tendrils of transformation began to weave around Nia, her skin growing translucent, her voice a mere echo of its former self. Lacan reached out to her, but his hands passed through her fading form. The demon vanished into the river's depths, leaving behind a silence more profound than before. Naya, now a ghostly entity tethered to the riverbanks, watched as Lacan's figure receded into the night, her heart heavy with the realization of her new existence. The village, once a source of warmth and community, became a place she could observe but never again touch. As the moon carved its path across the night sky, a chilling transformation unfolded along the banks of the Congo River. Nia, once a vibrant girl full of dreams and laughter, now found herself ensnared in a spectral existence, her form flickering between the living world and the ethereal plane. The village, her home, had become a place where she could no longer tread as she once did, her feet barely touching the soil that nurtured her. Lekan, driven by a desperate resolve to save Nia, delved into the forbidden, his nights spent poring over ancient texts and consulting with a hermit rumored to wield knowledge of the spirit world. Each step deeper into the dark arts mirrored Nia's own descent, binding their fates ever tighter in a dance with the darkness. The village elders, guardians of tradition and history, harbored a secret, a past entanglement with the river demon, marked by a failed ritual that now cast a long shadow over their present. This secret, buried under layers of time, began to resurface, whispers of guilt and fear mingling with the night air. Nia discovered a disturbing ability to infiltrate the dreams of the villagers, her presence a shadow that turned their slumber into a realm of nightmares and premonitions. This alienating power, though it distanced her further from the community she loved, held the key to unraveling the curse, a series of visions embedded in the collective nightmares of the village. In a cruel twist of fate, the demon, amused by the unfolding drama, bestowed a curse upon Lekan. In the vulnerability of his quest to save Nia, Lekan became bound to her curse, his knights transformed into a ghostly existence, a mirror of Nia's own plight. Their bond, now a chain forged by the demon's whim, united them in their cursed fate. Amidst this turmoil, themes of duality and reflection surged to the forefront, the river itself a symbol of the thin veil between life and death, the seen and the unseen. Nia's transformation became not only a tale of loss, but also a poignant exploration of confronting one's shadow self in the face of insurmountable odds. The climax of the chapter unfolded at the riverbank, where Nia, in a desperate bid to protect Lakan from the full weight of the curse, confronted the demon. This confrontation peeled back the layers of the demon's true intention to forge a bridge to the physical world, with Nia as the unwitting anchor. In this moment of revelation, the chapter closed with the village, enveloped in an uneasy silence, the fate of Nia and Lacan hanging in the balance, their struggle against the curse, a testament to the power of friendship and the indomitable human spirit. Yet the demon's laughter echoed across the river, a haunting reminder of the battles yet to come. In the realm where the Congo River's soul intertwines with the ethereal, Naya finds herself adrift, her essence now one with the spectral currents. The ethereal plane reveals itself as a labyrinth of emotions and memories, where the river's history mirrors the joy and despair of those it has touched. Here, Nia's transformation is complete. She is the river's lament, a spirit caught between worlds. Lekan, driven by a love that transcends the veil between life and death, embarks on a perilous journey. 
He consults with a shunned oracle, delving into forbidden rituals to bridge the gap to Nia. His sacrifice is profound. Ingesting the essence of the river, he blurs his own soul's boundaries, becoming a twilight being. This act binds him closer to Nia, but at the cost of his own tether to the living world. The river demon, a manipulator of fates, watches with amusement. It reveals to Nia and Lycan the cyclical nature of its curse, thriving on the sorrow of the river's spirits. In a cruel revelation, it discloses that their struggle is but the latest in a lineage of despair it has orchestrated, a testament to the river's forgotten tragedies. Amidst this revelation, Nia learns of others who've suffered her fate. Their whispers become her guide, leading her through the river's memories. She discovers that the demon's power is anchored in forgotten relics, submerged within the river's depths. To confront the demon, they must unearth these relics, a task fraught with peril as the demon's minions guard the secrets of the river. In a moment of clarity, Nia and Lekan uncover the demon's vulnerability, an ancient amulet lost to time, capable of severing the demon's claim on the river. However, retrieving it demands a sacrifice greater than any before. The river itself must claim a soul freely given, a soul pure and bound to the river's heart. As the chapter closes, Nia and Lekan stand on the precipice of decision. Lekan, already half lost to the spectral realm, realizes the grim truth. The sacrifice required may well be his own. Nia, torn between her desire to be free and her unwillingness to lose Lekan, faces an impossible choice. Their plan to confront the demon, armed with the knowledge of the amulet and the weight of their impending sacrifice, sets the stage for a final confrontation where love, loyalty and the very soul of the river hang in the balance. The lamentation of the river spirit, once a mournful echo, now rises as a clarion call to action. Nia and Lycan, bound by fate and heart, prepare to face the demon in a battle where the lines between victory and loss, sacrifice and salvation, are as fluid as the river itself. As dawn's first light pierced the heart of the Congo Basin, the air itself seemed charged with anticipation. Nia and Lekan, standing at the water's edge, prepared to confront the river demon, their resolve as strong as the current itself. The convergence of realms around them pulsed with energy, the veil between the living and the spectral thinner than ever. Summoning the ancestral spirits of the village, Nia and Lekan were not alone in their stand. Ethereal figures emerged from the mist, their presence a testament to the village's rich history and its battles with forces beyond comprehension. The river, a silent witness to countless generations, swirled around them, its waters reflecting the gathering of spirits. The demon, sensing the challenge to its dominion, emerged from the depths with a fury that set the sky ablaze. Its form was ever-changing, a maelstrom of shadow and light, its voice a tempest that sought to drown hope with despair. You cannot break what is eternal, it taunted, its power washing over them like a tidal wave. But Nia, with Lekan by her side, stood firm. Drawing upon the bond they shared and the strength of their ancestors, they fought back against the demon's onslaught. The battle raged, a clash of wills and magic, the air crackling with the power of ancient spells and the raw force of elemental spirits. In the heart of the storm, Nia realized the key to their victory lay not in defeating the demon outright, but in freeing the river from its grasp. Her love for Lekan, her village, and the river itself became a beacon, drawing the curse into her spectral form. In a moment of selfless sacrifice, she offered herself as the vessel to contain the demon's malice, her spirit a shield to protect all she held dear. With a cry that echoed through the realms, the demon lunged at Nia, seeking to claim her soul. But it found not a victim, but a force it could not comprehend, love, pure and unyielding. The demon, ensnared by Nia's sacrifice, was drawn into the amulet, its essence locked away by the very power it sought to corrupt. As the demon vanished, the tumult subsided, leaving the river calm, its waters clear as if cleansed by the ordeal. Nia, her form shimmering with ethereal light, had broken the curse but at a cost. She remained bound to the river, not as a cursed spirit but as its guardian, her presence a protection against the darkness. Lekan, heartbroken yet filled with gratitude, pledged to keep Nia's memory alive, her story a warning and a testament to the power of courage and love. The ancestral spirits, their duty fulfilled, faded into the dawn, 
leaving behind a village forever changed.